All right, so here's Duke. This is his go home video. Um, we're going to be walking through all of the basics on new lifestyle with Duke. I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible and as quick as possible so that you can come back and review this as often as you need to. Um, as you can see, Duke is currently laying in his crate. We like to use crates because it's a small safe space that keeps the dog calm and the rule around the crate is that you are to be calm. So as you can see right now, he's in a calm state of mind. Now if I just open this crate without saying anything, without any rules, he might get excited and want to rush out. So what I would do is, as you can see, he's already in a calm state of mind, right? Now if I open this, you can see that he already knows the rule, which is not to come out of the crate unless given permission. So your home should look like this. If you tell him to go to the crate and you open it, you don't want him getting excited. You don't want him rushing out. You don't want anything other than what you see right now. He's looking to me for information and waiting for me to either put a leash on him or release him. So what I would do from here, once he's calm, well, let's start. If he isn't calm, what would you do if Duke wasn't calm? Okay. If he was not calm and I opened the crate, he would be ready to rush out and most likely make that decision himself, right? So what I would do is, show the crate, what I would do is, if he was excited and he rushed out, I would open the crate, and as he rushed out, I would just close it in front of him. It's not, I want you to remember, it's not about slamming it, it's not about touching the dog at the crate, it's not about anything to do with him, necessarily, it's just reminding him of what the rule is. The rule is you don't come out until I give you permission. So if I, if I came here and he tried to rush out, right when he starts to make the decision, before his body's even slightly out of the crate, I would close it in front of him. So I open the door, his head's right here, he starts to come forward, I just close it. No words, no commands, just that's the rule. Now, now that he is calm, you should be able to put the tools on him. So I would get down. Oh. on his level again making note that I am preventing him from coming out if he wants to leave this crate he would have to go through me and he also remembers that rule it's not just the crate it's the threshold it's the boundary in general so I would from here I would put this on him and I would put it where it's going to work best which has the chain on the top Right? And now from here, I want you to remember that if I stand up, he is still not to rush out. The rule maintains. See? Now look at this. All you have to do is close the crate in his face. Right? So if he wants to follow me and my body language, so if I back up and he is following me, he might want to rush out. But even if it seems like a good intention, the rule is what's important. Because if this rule does not exist, Neither does the calmness that he currently has. And you notice he's looking at me for information and waiting for me to release him. That's what this drill can create. So from here, I would bring him out, but I don't just let him wander around or take me where he wants to go. The key is he looks to me for information and when I bring him out, he also looks to me for information. So I would say either a recall, which is here, or let's go to Duke, and then I expect him to come out of the crate and wait for me to tell him what to do. So it looks like this. Duke here. He comes out. I don't have to do anything. It's not necessarily about a command, but it doesn't hurt to put him into a sit. That's it. Right? As you can see, his energy is the same out here as it was inside there. That's what you're looking for. So... If you run into problems where he say he does rush out of the crate, if he did rush out of the crate, I would give him a, a pop on the leash and then I'd send him back in and do it again. I wouldn't progress from this position until he gave me the same calmness. And if he was past the point of coming back to this calmness, I would do the same thing again. Do a crate. And then close it. And then you start again, open. Let's go, sit, and again, you can use the word let's go or here, depending on what 
comes naturally to you in the moment. And from here, you can see he's looking to me. That engagement means he wants to interact with me because he knows it's good for him and he knows I'm also going to give him more information. So when he's in this state, if he's looking at me this way, I would mark good and then I would give him some food. And you can do this with all drills. So you can go crate, nope, down, good. You see, when I mark, he looks, he knows what that means. And then I would reward. The key with food is only use it to the extent that he listens more to you. And if you introduce, introduce food and he listens less to you, that's when I would use a correction. So if he's doing everything well and he's looking to me to the extent that he's not overly excited and distracted, I would continue to feed. But once he chooses distraction over listening, then you would stop the food and only reward when he was back in the mindset that we want, which is this. So I'll be here. I come to the door. So he comes out, he sits because this is a pattern we've created. From here, you can see he's looking at me. You don't always have to mark. Marking is good, but he understands that food comes from me when he listens, right? So that's an implied. You can tell by our interaction that he is looking to me for information. This is really what I want you to be looking for because Duke can't make mistakes when he's in this state. If, he, if I have what he wants and he also knows to get what he wants, he has to work with me, he's not going to get aroused and he's not going to make mistakes because he understands one where the boundary is and then he understands that I am what's most important to him because I provide his food, I provide his water, I provide structure and his free time. And freedom can only come to a dog like this. If he was flying off the wall, more freedom would make the problem much worse. And that's why we like to keep it very structured and very strict until he shows me that he doesn't need that strictness. And only Duke can decide when he's ready for more freedom. So from here, I would open the door. And as you see, when I opened the door, he did not rush out. The reason he did not rush out is because we create a rule, a boundary, at all doors. And that rule basically is don't rush out the door until I give you permission, right? The same thing with the crate. Don't come out until I give you permission. Sit until I give you permission to not sit. Stop at the door until I give you permission to go through, right? Now, if I came here and he was really excited, the way I would get that calm behavior, say if your crate's not next to the door, which I'm assuming it's not, say I'm coming up to the door, let's go. Say I'm, I'm coming up to the door, I would stop, and if he tries to rush out, I would just give a pop backwards. If he makes the mistake and he does rush out, I would reset. I'd come back, do a little loop, and come back to the door, and same thing. I'd come up to the door and stop. If he keeps going, I would pop again. Chances are, if, you do, if he makes a mistake once and you give him a, a correction at the right time, if your timing is correct, he won't make that decision again. So we're not out here correcting dogs for the same thing over and over again. The correction is meant to be a boundary to teach him what is okay and what isn't okay. It doesn't take long for a dog to understand that. Let's go. So I'm coming up to the door. I stop. He stops. It's not all about a sit. It's about understanding that this boundary is not to be crossed until given permission. Now if I walk through that boundary with his leash in my hand, he is allowed to come with me. That's our rule. Now, if I didn't want him to come out, I would put him in a sit, and then I, this is a drill that I like to do to teach this boundary and make it stronger. I would give him the leash. If he gets up and rushes out, all I would do is step up and put him back in a sit. If I do this and say he comes forward, I would say no, step forward, pull up on the leash. Same thing over and over again. You can also walk around him, this is how you get strong duration. This is how you get calm on command. This is, this is dog training, guys. This is all you need to know. So from here, you see how he's good? Good, right? So I would reward this because what you reward is what you get. So if he's in the state of mind and the state, you know, if, if he's how I want him to be, I would always want him to know how good that is. And we feed his daily kibble is fed through this type of training. It's all lifestyle, guys. It's not, it's not about can your dog sit, can your dog down. It's not a, or tricks. 
It's about can your dog live the lifestyle that works for you? And with a dog like Duke, you have to hold him accountable at all times. Or you've seen what, what he can become if you don't. Good. And you don't have to be stingy with treats. To the extent that he's doing good, you can reward him as much as you want. Don't overdo it in each situation. If I was here just feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding here, he would forget the purpose. It wouldn't mean anything to him. So I want to make sure when he makes a good decision, that's when I mark and reward. So from here, I would say, let's go, or here, and I would step out. Let's go. Now the rule here is no pulling on the leash. So right now, since I was calm inside the house, he's maintaining the same level of calm outside the house because I haven't given him a reason to be excited. And that's the rule. If we come outside, he is allowed to act more excited. We are allowed to have more fun, but that only comes when he shows that he can focus on me. Sit. Good. And see, the, to the extent that he wants the food, the easier it will be to get him to listen to you. So from here, I would walk him to where you want him to go to the bathroom. So I would pick a spot, a specific spot, and always go to the same spot because he will get in the habit of relieving himself as soon as he gets there. Once it's, he's picked up that, oh, this is where I go to the bathroom. So all I would do is I would say, let's go. I'd keep walking. I'd take him to where I want him to go to the bathroom. And then I would stop and have him sit. Sit. And then from here, I, we use the words go potty, and that's his release to go to the bathroom. Yeah, he heard me. Go potty. And from here, I would just hold the leash casually and just not let him move me. So potty time looks like this, where I give him the six-foot leash, but that's all he gets. If I gave him more freedom, he would probably choose not to go to the bathroom right away and right away, and he'd probably just self-satisfy and look around and, you know, be a dog. But as I said, freedom is only used when the dog earns it and shows that they're ready for it. All right, so now he's done going to the bathroom. So now I would bring him back to me. You can see, since I have kept his mood in the, the low levels, the calmness, the low level of arousal this whole time, there's no need to correct him. Corrections are not about punishing your dog all the time. Oh my God, he never listened. I need to keep correcting him. They're used as tools to make it so you don't ever have to correct him or remind him when he's doing something right or wrong because he understands what the rule and boundary is. So you can see how calm he is and, you know, this is just patterning. This is just from doing it the same way the whole time we've had him. Now from here, I would take him on a walk. We went over loose leash walking, but I'll go over it again. If I'm walking, let's go. And he gets to the end of the leash. I will wait with just, if you're just using a prong collar, I would wait till he gets to the end of the leash and then I'd release and then pop, right? When I release and pop, his reaction should be to turn and look at me. If he decides immediately to turn and look at me, I would reward that. Now, if he continues to be aroused, I'm going to have to take a step back and reset. I would most likely choose to go back inside and start at the threshold again. Right? So it's all about managing arousal. And to the extent that he explodes, you have to take steps back until he remains and he comes back to calm so I would go back inside I might even throw him back in the crate and do the same thing again and bring him back out and and guys this is this is just so that if you miss the arousal like I said at our first go home if you miss it and it is he already he say he's at peak arousal all you can do is reset and do it again so if you if you miss the chance to keep him calm I would reset. I, there's no reason to fight him. There's no reason to fight yourself. There's no reason to feel bad about yourself or him because it's neither one of your fault. And next time you come to the same situation, you will be ready. You will be aware because you know what happened last time. And so if I'm ready, I'll be more likely to catch him right before he goes into that arousal and then explodes. So from here, this is, you know, loose leash walking. Then for heel, I would just heel, say the word, back up and guide him, see I'm guiding him with the leash to my side. This can be done from anywhere. Heel, good. When he comes to command and he's giving you interaction, I would always reward that, at this stage especially, right? Now from here, I would say heel and start walking. 
Now, two powerful drills that I want you to know about. One is called, um, well, there's really, we don't really have a name for it, but one is a right hand turn away from the dog, and one is a left hand turn into the dog. A right hand, if I take a right hand, I can use this if he explodes, but I can also use it when he's calm to make sure he's focused on me. So if I just turn, you can see how he's not really focused on me, but he's not aroused yet, right? So I would keep doing this, and to the extent that I am doing this, each time he should give me more and more focus. And the other turn would be to turn into him, swing your right leg in front of him, and you see how by creating that boundary with my body, he has to give to me, otherwise he's running into me. So these two drills are really beneficial to get that good position that he knows, but it's just a little tool for you to use maybe if he's aroused or flustered or, you're, you know. Look to what he needs. So right now he's really calm, so I don't really need to try to get him to listen, you know. Right? So just a little pop if he loses attention. And then you don't have to say anything. He should know to follow once I said heal the first time. You can say heal, you don't have to. Um, now, another thing I'd like to say is, you know, when I turn into him, my body creates space. Okay, so when I'm turning right, the leash creates the boundary, right? So if I turn and he doesn't come with me, the leash is going to tighten and I'm not going to stop moving. So when, it's really important to remember that when you are doing these drills, you don't stop moving. If I stop moving, I'm giving him an opportunity to go back into his old patterns. But what we're looking for here is this cool, calm, collected dog who is looking to me for information no matter what is going on around us. Sit. Good. Now, during the walk you can reward him. I would stop periodically and the key is if he doesn't sit, you just pull up on the leash. All right? And if you do that and he looks at you, I would always mark good and reward that. You can also mark while walking. So that would look like this. Heel. See, I'm, I'm walking. If he's in a good position here, I'd say good. And then I reach for my food and I bring it down to him and keep walking. He is never give him an option to make his own decisions until he has earned the right for freedom. Your trust is what he has to earn before you give him freedom position we want his head by my left leg if he is going too far forward that would be something that you would correct and you would want to catch him as soon as he took a step forward or went a little too far forward you would just pop back on the leash and or use your e-collar but we'll go over that in person I want you to understand how to use the leash because to him it will be the clearest communication in terms of transferring from us to you, the e-collar is very beneficial. But in terms of just simple handling, all you need is this. That's good. So here, we're going to the threshold, same thing. I'm gonna stop on the way in. And remember, he doesn't have to sit, but he can. It never hurts. Sit. Awesome. Okay, so we just moved the camera so that it's easier to see this. Um, the same thing, I can, if he's not calm, I'll reset, I'll do a little loop, come back, stop again, and I'll do that until he can wait at this threshold. Never allow him to go through the threshold without your permission. He will melt into your hands. It will go a long way. He will be the softest little teddy bear if you can maintain this. You can see how soft and sweet he is, and he's not aroused, he's not acting, he's not peeing on my boot. He's not doing any of that. Good. So from here, I would go inside. Now it depends. Depending on your lifestyle will determine what comes next. So if, say, it's morning and you're going to continue your morning routine and you're going to make yourself breakfast or something, then I would come in and I would send him straight to place. And I would have him lay there until... Either you're going to do something with him, or you put him in your crate in the crate so that you can leave. So that would look like this. Let's go. I bring him in. Same thing. Just as I don't want him to rush out of the crate, I also don't want him to rush back into the crate because 
Remember, every time he makes his own decision, see, he might make that decision. If he wants to go, you can't get upset with him. You just have to remind him. This boundary exists for a reason, and I will enforce it. Let's go. And you can see, I know it sounds like a lot, and these rules might be really new to you and a complete change of your lifestyle, but you've seen, just by his behavior, you've seen how big of a difference this can make. Crate. We like to use the word crate. Now, same thing. He goes in and he stops, and he looks at me for information. So from here, I would either lean in, take his tools off, and close the crate and leave. That's what I would do. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so the next command is place. We have not used place very much with him in our lifestyle. We generally use it down, so I'll have him hang out with me. Say I'll be in the office, he'll be hanging out with me, and I'll just put him in a down by my side. That works as well, but the main key, the main concept is that he is calm and laying in command and does not leave until I give him permission. So say I bring him out. He waits here. See that excitement? I'm not going to correct that if he corrects it himself. If he came out and was really excited, that's when I would pop him and put him back in the crate. But you see how he, he, he ended up coming out and calming down. So now the command for the place is place, and it can be any bed. He will have to learn each time you introduce a new picture, a new bed, you will have to reintroduce it and make sure he knows. So you can walk up to place, you can point at it, and while pointing, say the command. So that would look like this. Let's go. Place. Good. Now, this is fine, right? So from here, this is not a complete place until he's laying down. So then I would tell him, do down. Now, to the extent if he listens, awesome. If he takes a few seconds to do any command, that's perfectly acceptable, as long as he is calm. Now from here, he's doing exactly what I wanted, so I would say good, right? And then I would feed that. Now place is stay there until I release you. So that should mean he doesn't need to be on the tie back. If you find that he keeps leaving, that means that you need to be paying more attention to him. So if, he, if I left the room and he got up, it would just take a little bit of, of drilling to get him to understand that new boundary. And we'll go over that when we come to your house. So from here, you should be, no, sorry, I said the command. Um, he should just lay there, right? Say if he does come up, the best thing you can do is catch him right when he takes a step off. If you catch him right when he like stands up and starts to move off and you say N-O, he should immediately stop and be like, oh, I'm supposed to be on place and lay back down. If he doesn't, say, I'm gonna call him off, but say that he did this without me calling him off. Do here. I would take him, I would have said N-O as soon as he came off, and then all I would do, I would correct him when he came, like, if I said no and he didn't fix it, say I have the e-collar on him. I say no, he, he gets off the place for it, Right when he comes off the place board, I, I, I mark no and then I stim, I tap once on the remote. That's his correction, that's all he needs. I don't have to hold it down, I don't have to do anything. All I need is a no, a tap, and if he doesn't choose to go back himself, it's not a big deal, you just lead him back. You can say the command, you don't have to. And then you make sure he's fully laid down and disengaged again. So, like I said, if he makes, if he comes off, and O, tap on the remote, guide him back. Now, if he continues to get, up, get off, I mean, okay, cut that. Um, but now. You wanna show like you like opening the door and showing like he should just yeah, lay yeah, here. Yeah. So from here, the reason place and or down, like duration in general for a dog is very beneficial because you can drill anything that he shows you he has a problem with. So say, I know you said that he had a problem with balloons. I would introduce balloons as he's on his place board, but I wouldn't start by giving them to him or showing him or letting him interact with them. We want him to exist around the thing that makes him explode, right? 
So I would put him on place and I would keep the same rule. If he gets off, I'd say NO stim and I'd put him right back. Right? Now, what I would do is say I would introduce whatever it is. Just give me a second. You get a toy. Now say, say I have something that he really likes, whether it's food, whether it's a toy. I know he likes this toy because I've played with him with this toy before, right? You can start by just introducing it. You see he's showing interest. I'm not going to con correct the interest unless it's clear that he is going to break the, the command, okay? So I would start by just having this. I have it. I have possession over this. It's, it's mine. I would really recommend that... Whoever he listens best to is the one who introduces this and does this drill with him most often. And then you have to think about it. Your kids are a part of the family too, but they will be a completely different distraction to him than something like this or you or another person, right? So you have to introduce, if he shows any problems, which he might not, if he has any problems with anything, the way you would introduce him and show him how to be calm is making sure he's in a calm state on place, and then I can introduce it, I can walk around with it, I can throw it, and anything I do, it doesn't matter, he doesn't move until I tell him to. I could throw food on the ground, I could, I could even say good. If I say good, good does not mean get up and come to me. Good means you're doing something good, I will bring you food, but that doesn't mean I have to bring you food. So from here, I could say good, because I threw the toy, he didn't go for the toy, when he makes the decision not to, I'll show you the correct timing. It would be like this. I throw it. Good. You see how he made the decision not to go, and then I marked the second he he like decided not to go. Now I would always use food, use correction when he makes a mistake. Always use food when you're doing this drill if he does good. It's very important for him to know when he does good. If you don't tell him he did good, he'll start to be like, well, nothing good ever happens to me, and then you're just telling me what not to do. So you have to show him that it's worth it to listen to you. Good. And the food I would be using is just his daily kibble. All this is is kibble. Um, and from here, the same thing. Next, you're going to go. You want to put him away. You put him in the crate. Um... You want to hang out? Let him hang out. You want him to be near you? Release him. Let's go. Bring him with you. Where do you want to go? You want to go sit in your office? Duke, down. Give him some grace. Good. The key is, when you're teaching him something, you want to mark the second he does it, but once it's an understood behavior, that's not as important. No. Down. Just a leash pop. And from here, just let him hang out. Maybe have the leash under your foot or near you. Uh, if he makes a mistake, same thing. What's really important about down duration is that you bring him right back to where he was. If you let him get up and then you say N-O and then you put him back in the down, but say he moved over there, that will become a habit to him where he's like, I'll just get up and then I'll lay where I want and then they'll put me in the down. So the key is to wherever you put him is where he stays. Good. Now if he's calm and he's relaxed and he's sleeping, you can reward him. But you always run the risk of bringing him to excitement depending on what activity he's doing. If he so from here, you can do this with the door, you can do it with the doorbell, you can do it with eating at the table, put the place, the place like in the kitchen or wherever your table is, maybe put it off to the side. And then same rule, if he gets up, you... Mark, correct, take him back. You can do that with the door. You can do that with your daughters. They can do stuff like this. Do, 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 do. Good. Even with my dog barking. That scared me behind the camera. <laughs> even with my dog barking, you can see he's still focused on me. One, because I have what he wants, and two, because he understands the boundaries. Good. Alright, say he's about to fall asleep. He, he's been laying there. If he is already calm, let him be calm. If you introduce food when he's calm, you're bringing him out of that. But what I want you to understand is calmness 
isn't, oh, he, he's sad or this or he's lazy or he's tired. Calmness is rewarding. Calmness is the reward. Imagine not knowing how to relax at the end of the day and always being wound up. That's the state that he was living in. So that's why his behavior always was so sporadic, because he's coming from a place of unease, dis-ease. But if we can bring him to the current moment and get him into a calm state, that alone is the reward. 